Hi everybody, this is Andrew Chen with AsiansOnFilm.com and I have the very talented and lovely Sharon Yamamoto. Did I say that right? Yamamoto. No, wait. Yamato. Yamato. Too many M's. Say yeah. Because that's common. Mine is very unusual. Yamato is the correct pronunciation. Okay, I apologize. Yamato. No and she's the co-director and writer of A Flicker in Eternity. So Sharon, tell us a little bit about your film. Um, well, it was, it's a 25-minute short documentary. Uh, it happens to be a subject that I'm really, um, I think sh the subject and I are one. Um, it has to do with the World War II incarceration of Japanese Americans, but it's told from a very unique perspective by a young boy who actually um, lived through it, and it's in his words because we were able to get the diary that he kept all through those years. So it's a very um, personal story because my parents were in camp, but it's also um, a story that we hope young people can relate to because it's told with such, um, it's, it's almost whimsical because he actually went through it and he was a young man at the time. He's, it, the story starts when he was 16. Um, unfortunately, he, he only lived to be 19 and that's part of the story as well. I, I I would like to give away the ending, but maybe probably not good. But. Yeah, we'll let our audience see see the ending for themselves. Um, wow, this is such a, a powerful and personal story. Uh, what do you want the audience to take away from it after they've seen it? I think the most important thing is just to become aware that this actually happened in our country, our country of liberty you know, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Right, this right. this was a period in time where most, a lot of people, I won't say most people, a lot of people don't even know that 120,000 Japanese Americans were taken from their homes and put in these camps. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, it's a subject that I've studied and I've become rather close to because of the fact that I've interviewed a lot of people who went through it. Um, and. I feel like I know it and that most people on the West Coast know it, but there's still people, believe it or not, who don't. And it's, it's one of those parts of history that it would rather be, sh people would rather put it aside because it's unpleasant. Right. And so I think a lot of people who don't know about it, it's because they've never been taught in schools about it. It's changing, things are changing, but I think that's one of the primary reasons. We just want to let people know that this happened mm -hmm. and that it was an unfortunate phase in our history that we, if we learn from it, we can grow from it. So hopefully it's got a positive message as well. Wonderful, very wonderful. Now what are, what were some of the obstacles in shooting a, a film like this? Um, we actually um, used all archival footage and stills. Um, there is some things that uh, are my co-director Ann Kaneko shot, which uh, the actual diary, we were able to um, put our hands on it and see it. At the, it's being archived at the Japanese American National Museum. Um, it's one of those pieces of history that is so phenomenal because it's now, let's see, he wrote it back in 1940, so it's a it's a piece of work that existed many, many, many years ago, and uh, the family actually found it in their garage. And um, so we were able to shoot that, which really, I hope, brought it to life. Um, the diary is interesting in that it's not just written words. Um, the protagonist of our film, Stanley Hayami, was a artist as well. So it was, we really wanted to bring his words to life and he drew in his diary. So there are a lot of drawings that we were able to animate so that it wasn't a stagnant piece of paper. Okay. So it's, it's, it, it's charming because he's charming. You know, it's right. a charming story because the, the, the boy who, who wrote and drew it was really charming. And thankfully we had a wonderful, um, voice over actor Aaron Yu who who played Stanley but in voice and he did a spectacular job of bringing Stanley to life and that was the goal you know we did was we don't want to see it as a piece of history we wanted to bring it to life so that you know people of his age today can relate to him as opposed to think of thinking of it as a time way in the past and you know we don't we don't want to think about it anymore so
that was that was the goal and I, I I hope we accomplished it. <laughs> Our, um, actually, we have a website. Um, it's called FlickerInEternity.com. We are cr the DVDs are hot. We just produced them, um, and we're selling them online. We hope to have distribution uh, soon, but at the moment, it's only by DVD online. Okay. Great. Well, congratulations, Sharon, and thank you for talking with us. It was thank nice you meeting much. you. It was yeah. Thank you.